Hey guys, it's Victoria. Welcome back to Pemhead. Today I'm very excited to share this video with you and I'm going to talk all about how I use my bullet journal. Sorry if you can hear a dog barking in the background. I don't know if it's a new dog in the apartment building or something, but the poor thing just barks all day long and I don't know if it's lonely or what. Anyways, if you can hear that, I'm sorry. But I've made a few videos here and there about my bullet journal. Um, I've shared some of my spreads on my other channel, Victoria Zimmerman, put it up above, you should go check it out. And I've gotten asked a lot, well, how do you actually use your bullet journal? Like what, how is it different from a normal planner? And it just seems like a lot of work. So I wanted to come on here and try to, as concisely as possible, but this is gonna be a long video, show you and take you through my bullet journal and explain how I use it and why it benefits me so much. So I'm gonna start by taking you through the different spreads I have, what I do yearly, what I do monthly, and what I do weekly. We're gonna switch over to a bullet journal view now, and we'll get into that part of the video. All right, this is my bullet journal. It is a Rhodia dot journal. Um, this year is in orange. I absolutely love it. Each year I start my bullet journal with a list of goals. I've separated mine between personal and professional. Just thinking through goals and actually physically writing them down seems to help me a lot. And I like to have them as like a guiding thing. And if I don't get them all done, I'm not upset about it or anything like that. The next yearly spread I have is a year overlook. And this is the first year I've had this. I absolutely love it. I came to realize that I needed it last year and I didn't have it. And this is where I keep track of events, travel, birthdays, parties, anything kind of like that. So I have these two Pilot Friction pens and they are erasable, which is the greatest thing ever. I love it. And so on this spread, I think orange is travel and blue is kind of events. From there, we move into my monthly spreads. So it all starts with a single page for the month. Down this side, I have the dates and then Right next to that is the corresponding day of the week. I've chosen the single line per day versus a box calendar just because I find that that's more space than I need. I will never have more than like one or two things a day. This works best. I don't like being overwhelmed by space, I've realized. This is where I write out meetings, events, flights, birthdays, bills, and all that fun stuff. The next page is my content calendar. I don't know if you can see actually what's written on here because I have it written in orange pen. Down the right side, just like in a normal calendar, I have the dates as well as the corresponding thing that gets posted that day, whether it's an email, a YouTube video, or a blog post. And then on this side, I have little check boxes for notes, create, done, and social. And I'll talk about what those mean to me later on in the video. The next one is my brain dump page. I decided I wanted a little bit more structure to my brain dump. So now I've split it into four sections, as you can see. So up here, the first section is content. And anytime any sort of idea comes to mind for a blog post or a video that I could post, I write that down here. And this is a very important section, which I'll talk about. The next section is to do is just kind of things I need to do that month. This section is things I want to research, whether it's for a video, a blog post, or just for a personal curiosity. And then finally ideas, which is just ideas or just a general leftover brain dump of stuff that doesn't fit in the other sections. Sorry if the screen has changed a bit. Uh, my camera fell over, but thankfully I caught it. Oh, I was saying I like having this space in particular because it's so nice to have a place to put all my content ideas and this is really important to being consistent um, with Femhead without being overwhelmed. The next spread is my finances and I'm gonna show you a blank page from this month because I haven't filled it out yet. So this is my financial spread. I've split it into two pages. I used to just have a single page, but I just wanted, I needed a bit more space. I've chosen to title them as receive and give instead of income and expenses, just because having a positive mindset about money is a very important thing to me and it's a very helpful thing to, for me. I think it is so important to keep a consistent eye on your money. For a long time, I had absolutely no idea how much money I was making, especially when I was working at the restaurant and trying to start Femhead. And it was really beneficial for me to know how much it was it was actually more than I thought and this helped me figure out at what point I could quit my side job to go full-time on Femhead with how much money I needed and how much I was actually making. I try to check in and fill it out 
every week or two, but honestly, it's been like once a month recently, but I still think this is important just to have and to look back on. And then finally, we get into my weekly spread, which I'm gonna show you this week. So in my old planner, I had an entire page for each day, and I was completely overwhelmed by that amount of space. And I found that I would just fill it up with stuff that didn't matter, and that I wouldn't be getting the important things done because I'd be focused on like the easy tasks. So because of that, I realized I needed a weekly spread rather than a daily spread in a planner. So my weekly spread is two pages, as you can see. This top corner is kind of my goals and to-dos for the week. Things don't have a specific day that need to be done, but they need to be done by the end of the week or there's something I want to do by the end of the week. And I think I have eight lines per day. So the first thing I love about a bullet journal is it's customizable, as you can see. If you've watched any sort of other bullet journal videos, you've seen that there are so many different options for spreads, pages, designs, colors, markers, rulers, you name it. If I decide I wanna change something, add something, remove something, I can just do it without having to wait to buy a whole new planner the following year. I can just do it that following week or month or whatever it may be. And not to mention trying to find a planner that has everything you want in it is nearly impossible. Having a content calendar is super duper, super duper critical to staying consistent with Femhead. I always plan out my content calendar for the following month, the last week or two of that current month. So for example, this coming week or the following week is when I will plan out my calendar for June. So how do I create my content calendar? I think that is maybe what a lot of people wanna know. So when I get to that last week or two of like, okay, I need to start thinking of my content calendar for June, I will look back on my brain dump and we'll go, let's go to April's real quick. And normally I have like 50 to 75% of the topic ideas needed already written down and I can brainstorm the rest of them over a day or a couple days, depending on how quickly they come to mind. But it's really helpful to like keep track of these throughout the month and every time potential idea pops in my mind, I'll just write it down and then I can suss it out at the end of the month. I figure out how many topics I need for the following month simply by looking at how many Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays there are each of that particular month because those are the days in which I post and then I can figure out, okay, I need this many topics total and I need this many for videos and this many for blog posts. So on this one I wrote, I need 17 topics for June. And so I can just kind of keep track of that. Once I have the necessary number of topics for the month, I will go through and separate them between what I want to write a blog about versus what I think would make a good video. From there, I separate them by the actual topic. So my content calendar is balanced throughout the month rather than having four things in a row about periods and then five things about minimalism. I can go back and forth between the topics and it's a bit more balanced in my opinion. I try to have at least one cycle related topic a week, if not more, and then I kind of build it from there. Once I've decided what I'm gonna post when and where, I will fill out my content calendar and I have a space here where I can write out the topic. So I have this physical copy where I'll check stuff off here and I think this is really helpful, but I also put a digital copy of this on my Evernote because that's where I write my blog posts, my notes, my emails and all that stuff. So I think it's also helpful to have it in there. And then I can get started on it. I try to work a week ahead of schedule, but sometimes I'm working on content for that week, but I try to have the notes for the coming week done before that week. Anyways, just kind of whatever works for you. But if I can get further ahead, the better. And if I have a trip coming up or if I know I might not be able to be at my computer or working a bunch, I will schedule things ahead of time which is so, so helpful. And I do that for big trips, like when we've gone to Bali or Sri Lanka. So each week I usually sit down either on Sunday or Monday morning and plan out my week. So I'll start my week and it'll look like this and I will fill in the days, the dates and that sort of stuff. I will brainstorm everything that needs to get done that week. And I find that just kind of writing it out on a plain notebook is just super helpful in thinking through everything that needs to get done, things I wanna get done, everything and just having it in a place and then I can organize it onto here. I will then write down everything on that list in a particular day or up in this section if it doesn't have a certain date it needs to get done by. I will also look at you know the monthly spread and take all of my events, meetings, calls, and that sort of stuff and put them into their respective day as well. I don't plan out a day until that morning because I don't know what all I'm going to complete the day before. Um, so each morning, I will sit down and decide what I'm going to do for that day. I keep my tasks to four or five things, as you can see, and I kind of split my days in between work tasks and non-work related things. I almost always have a plain 
just normal spiral notebook with me. And that's what I'll use to write down edits from videos, brainstorm that to-do list for the week, notes from books, shopping lists. I love having a scratch notebook with me, but I love having all of my important information in one place as well. I've made a video about how I create content for Femhead, but we can go over that quickly, like I said today, um, because I think it's important and getting that down pat has made being consistent on Femhead so much easier. So I've got my content calendar. I've got the document in my Evernote. I always start with the notes for whatever said topic it is, and I write those in my Evernote app um, on my computer. And this is where I will either research what I need to look up for that particular topic, or I'll just kind of like brain vomit everything I want to get out about that topic. The next checkbox is create, which means either filming the video or writing the blog post. Done is when it is edited, uploaded, and scheduled to post, whether that's on YouTube or my website. I use iMovie to edit, and I use Squarespace for my website. And the final box, is social which is social media and it means I've scheduled posts to go on the respective social media whether that's Twitter Facebook or Instagram I use Asana to create my social media calendar and Hootsuite to schedule my posts for Facebook and Twitter but that's what that check mark means all right I know that was probably a lot but hopefully that gave you a glimpse into how I use my bullet journal it's honestly so valuable to how productive and consistent I am. I just really can't imagine myself going back to a normal pre-made planner that you buy in a store. And I hope I've shown you today that a bullet journal is customizable to whatever works for you, no matter how simple or elaborate that is. That is what I have to share with you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with more Femhead videos. Give this video a like if you like bullet journal videos, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.